picture this, you're a college student with an interest in documentary filmmaking, and you sign up for a course billed as an exploration of direct cinema, a form of film that is meant to silently observe what is happening, as if the camera wasn't actually there. You walk in the first day to find Kazuhiro Soda, an award-winning documentarian, in class and discover that you will not only learn from him, but make a feature film with him, too. Pretty wild, huh? That's the origin story for The Big House, a film directed by Soda. 14 student filmmakers and University of Michigan faculty members Marcus Norns and Harry Saris. It explores what goes into constructing a Michigan Stadium football Saturday experience, along with lengthy journeys into the surrounding sociological froth, yet manages to barely show any gridiron action at all. Big House Movie, FFF 2018, Photo, Big House, I didn't know at the very beginning of the class who Soda was. I don't think I even knew that he was participating in the process. But the first class, he showed up and he's a really humble guy, you wouldn't think that he's done seven films before. And he was very accessible, says UM senior Vessel Stokely, who shot several segments included in the film and was part of the winter semester editing team. No matter what your feelings about the Michigan Wolverines, the resulting film should be compelling for anyone with even a passing curiosity about the whys and hows of all the little things that go into creating such a massive, and, ultimately, ephemeral, event. Viewers see everything from the stadium kitchens to the volunteers who help clean the stadium on Sunday mornings to the young kid outside the gates trying to sell candy bars to passers-by. Big House Movie, FFF 2018, Photo, Big House, I wasn't familiar with the Michigan Stadium at all. In fact, I didn't even know the rules of the American football, says Soda, who was invited to UM as a visiting artist by Norns. It was Marcus's idea to make a film about the big house. When he suggested me to join the project, I had no idea about the stadium except for the fact that it is the largest in the US. And that it gets packed with more than 100,000 people, the entire population of Ann Arbor, every game. But it was quite enough for me to decide to join the project, especially because it is my policy that I should not know too much about the subject before I make a documentary. The Big House is Kazuhiro Soda's eighth film, all made adhering to what he calls his Ten Commandments of Observational Filmmaking. The Peabody Award-winning director's upcoming ninth feature, also shot while he was in Michigan, centers on juvenile lifer John Hall, who was released from prison after half a century at age 67. Ann Arbor and Detroit have such a stark contrast despite the fact that they are only one one hour apart by car. I felt fortunate to film both because they give me fuller picture of Michigan or America. More, Kazuhiro Soda's Ten Commandments of Filmmaking, The Big House, was shot in the fall of 2016, a particularly fraught time in our country's history. Indeed, it originally concluded with footage of an anti-Trump protest outside the stadium. While Soda preferred to close the film in this way, the production team took an internal vote and decided to cut it, worrying that keeping it made too much of a political statement for a documentary style that is intended to make only neutral observations. Instead, the film ends with a speech by UM President Mark Schlissel speaking to alumni about the need for their financial contributions to keep the school competitive. It was a decision that Soda accepted wholeheartedly. This project was only possible because of this unique democratic team. It was so fun and pleasant to work with Marcus and Terry and our students. I'm not sure if we could have this kind of ideal collaboration again in a different setting. It could have been a once-in-a-life opportunity, he says. Big House, Photo, Big House, One of my motivations was to translate the energy and the excitement of being in the stadium during the game to the visual, audio language so that the audience could re-experience it. I was also keen on the political, economical, and social aspects of the football games, especially the relationship with the military, nationalism, commercialism, race and the class. When shot President Schlissel's speech, I immediately thought it could be the ending of the film, you have to see what the footage is telling you. That's really what the editing process is, determining what the relevant themes are that occur over and over, and the supportive evidence you have in terms of the footage you have, says Stokely. So in our rough cut we had interesting stories and interesting character that hit a lot of different things, but recognizing, okay, what are the things that tie these sequences together, that was the challenge, and I think we did a good job of that, it's a very distinct and rich culture. It really reflects and says a lot about Americana and what we value and what we choose to leave outside the stadium, what we bring inside the stadium, the big house, screens at 8.30 p.m. Fry at the Community Arts Auditorium, Wayne State University. Also, 7 p.m. Sat at Imagine Royal Oak. Tickets at FreepFilmFestival.com. After the films, on Friday, the Projection Booth podcast, host Mike White talks to co-directors Terry Saris, Sean Moore, Hannah Noel, V. 
Prasad and Vessel Stokely. On Saturday, White Talks to co-directors Sarika Tyagi, Saris, Noel, Prasad and Stokely. Free Film Festival More than 75 events centered in Greater Downtown Detroit continues through Sunday Full lineup tickets links at freepfilmfestravel.com Most events $10 advance, $12 at the door Raider Share the story, https colon slash slash on.freep.com slash 2qsadsar